Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of MacBreak Studio. I'm Travis Richmond. Today, I'm going to walk you through using a compressor and an audio mixing process called sidechaining. The idea behind a sidechain is fairly simple. In short, you use the output of one track to control another. For example, you can use the output of your dialog track to control the amount of compression applied to your music track, which is an effective way to automatically duck your music whenever somebody speaks. Let's take a look. To get started, I'm going to solo one of my dialog tracks. With my mixer open, in the A2 channel strip, I'll double click on the Dynamics field. Dynamics gives you four effects, Expander, Noise Gate, Compressor, and the Limiter. I'll be focusing on the Compressor. To enable it, click on the title Compressor. Once enabled, we get a graphical representation up top. We can also see that I have a graph represented in my channel strip letting us know that the compressor has been enabled. So what does a compressor do? When speaking, our voices naturally differ in loudness. For instance, anything from a whisper to a shout. This is referred to as the dynamic range, or difference between the loudest and quietest parts of the audio. But when watching a video, whether it be on the internet or network television, the audience does not want to constantly be raising and lowering the volume. To fix this, we need to reduce the dynamic range of the audio. And that is exactly what a compressor does. It compresses the dynamic range. Think of it as someone listening for the volume to reach a certain level and then automatically turning it down for you. At the top of the dynamics effect, you have an input meter telling you what level your signal is coming into the dynamics effect. You have a graphical representation of the changes you are making. Meters that tell you how much your signal is being reduced. A makeup slider that allows me to raise my overall signal after I've reduced it. And then you have your output meter, showing you overall signal level after the compression has been applied. In the compressor, your two main controls are going to be threshold and ratio. Threshold tells the compressor at what decibel level to start compressing. The ratio is how much compression will be applied. Therefore, if I were to leave my settings as they are, any audio signal passing negative 15 dB will be reduced by a 2 to 1 ratio. For every 2 decibels, we will only hear 1 decibel. Then, below that, you have Attack, Hold, and Release. Attack tells the compressor how quickly to enable compression once the signal passes the threshold. Hold is how long the compressor will continue compressing after attack has been completed. Release is how quickly the compressor is turned off once it's fallen below the threshold. I'm going to adjust my compressor settings while listening to this clip here. But first, I'm going to ensure that looping is enabled. and then I have Range Selection Mode selected by pressing R on my keyboard. Then I'll select the clip to set a range around it, and then press Option or Alt Forward Slash to play back. Uh, oh, yeah, there it is. Uh, Do you feel it? First I'll adjust the threshold. I'll click and drag to the left to lower my threshold just a little bit. Oh, yeah, there it is. Do you feel it? I'll try negative 22. Do you feel it? Oh, yeah, there it is. Do you feel it? Oh, oh, yeah, there it is. Do you feel it? We can see that we're getting a little bit of reduction here. But I think we could use a little bit more. So I'm going to raise my ratio to 4 to 1. Oh, yeah, there it is. Do you feel it? Oh, yeah, there it is. Do you feel it? If we compare the input and output meters, you can tell that there is a small difference between our lows and our highs. Oh, yeah, there it is. Do you feel it? I'll pause playback. I'm going to leave attack and release set to their defaults. Listening to playback, everything sounds great and I don't think I need to adjust it anymore. One thing to look out for is a pumping effect, or abrupt changes in volume. The best rule of thumb is to adjust the attack and release until everything sounds right. Before moving on, I'll double check my overall level to see if I need to raise my makeup control. I'll press Option or Alt forward slash again to loop playback. Oh, yeah, there it is. Do you feel it? Oh, yeah, there it is. Do you feel it? I'll raise my makeup gain just a little bit. Do you feel it? Oh, yeah, there it is. Do you feel it? Oh, yeah, there it is. Do you feel it? Pause playback. To review, I successfully lowered my dynamic range, but it also lowered the overall levels. To compensate for the change, I raised the makeup control to ensure the signal is right around negative 12 dB. Great! Another great feature with Fairlight's compressor is that you can use it as a ducking tool. I'll click the Send button in the sidechain section of the compressor. Note. 
The compressor does not need to be turned on for the send button to work. If I turn off my compressor, I can still enable and disable the send. I'll turn compressor back on. Next, I'll navigate to the index and enable my music track and then hide the index. I'll also solo the music track. Press Option or Alt X to clear my range, close this dynamics window, and open the dynamics for the A8 channel strip. I'll enable the compressor, and then click the Listen button. Now, what I've done is send my level information from the Justin dialog track to be listened to by my music track. What will happen is the compressor will be triggered by the levels from the Justin dialog track. Therefore, every time Justin speaks, my music will be lowered. I'm also going to pick a section of the timeline where it's easy to hear the difference, around here at 52 seconds. Next, I'm going to exaggerate these controls so we can hear the change happening. I'll reduce my threshold to about negative 30, and I'll increase my ratio to at least 10 to 1. Let's play that back. For speeding ticket, there's some punk kid with a fake ID at the stop and save. I would kill for a cat. Okay, and if we wanted to hear that effect even more, I could raise my ratio again. These are exaggerated settings, just to make what's happening easier to observe. For speeding ticket, there's some punk kid with a fake ID at the stop and save. You can see here that every time the talent speaks, the music track's levels are reduced. This can be a useful tool if you need a quick way to duck some audio. One thing that can help to make sure that your music isn't jumping back into the mix while dialogue is being spoken is to increase the hold parameter. This will ensure that the music stays ducked until the dialogue signal drops below the threshold. If you like this video, please check out my full-length Fairlight tutorial at RippleTraining.com. And if you like what we do on this channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.